start recording. I'm back. Due to absolutely no demand, I don't think anybody watched my previous video. Anyway, <clears throat> this is a video about flats. Uh, flats are a part of the coloring process, and I don't. There's not really a lot of um, resources out there to learn flats. I learned mine off of a blog from a flatter who did um, Salmon Overture, among other things. And um, what flats uh, essentially are uh, are placeholders for color that's going to be put in later. And uh, there's um, three main tools in Photoshop. Uh, most most colorists and flatters are using Photoshop. Three main tools in Photoshop uh, that are used, and uh, one of them here is the lasso. So we get our lasso selection tool. Make sure anti-aliasing is turned off and feathering is at zero. Okay. Anti-aliasing off, feathering at zero. You want that perfect crisp line for th for the selection because you're going to need to go back in and reselect things. And if there's an anti-aliasing line, you're going to get that fringing around the edges. So make sure the anti-aliasing is off. Uh, another tool is the pencil tool. That is good. Um, pencil tool is basically what it is. It's the pencil tool, but it again it has that hard sharp edged line of just straight up pixels and uh, I usually have mine on a out of a bit of a a brush that allows me to vary the weight of the, of the of the of the stroke but if you look closely at this <clears throat> where are we here you can see the pixels you can actually see the pixels you can see the edge that's what we want that's what we want Third tool is the wonderful. I don't know what it's called anymore. When I when I learned Photoshop, it was like the magic, the magic wand tool, and that basically will make a selection for you, um, based upon how open or closed the line work is. So it's not usable all the time. This is the image that I did for the Jim Lee uh, draw along. The Supergirl. Every time I look at it, I see everything that's wrong with it. And it's driving me crazy. Uh, this will go away in about uh, two years. So let's say I'm going to select her her arm. Oh, by the way, I've got my layers set up over here uh, on the right. I have my inks on the top. I've seen other people do different different ways, but this is how I like to do it. I got my inks up on the top. It's on a multiply layer, so the whites turn invisible, so I can see right through the black line work. And then I create a flat layer underneath, which is pretty simple. And uh, usually I make a, second, a secondary layer for just the backgrounds. Um, some people will use uh, masks. They'll use a lot of masks when they're creating their flats and stuff. And that way uh, you don't have to worry about the traveling ant stuff. Anyway, if you're using, I don't know why I'm holding this. This is the same whether it's the lasso or the magic, magic wand. Um, <clears throat> When using the magic wand, you're going to need to do, once you make your selection, you're going to need to modify, expand, and I go by about two pixels. And that way, when you put the color underneath, it will go two pixels beyond where the selection was, because the selection is probably going to have stopped at the blacks of the line work. Um, this is going to be a little more difficult for some other uh, artists, because some artists use a lot of tones and... Um, that's going to keep you from uh, being able to make that selection, but you can get to that when you come to it. My, my, my line workers is much more kind of old school stuff, so it's a little easier. Um, so anyway, I'm going to make a selection, and I got my paintbrush, or paint bucket, paint bucket. I usually just think, in as far in my mind, I don't think, oh, I'm going to use the paint bucket. I, I just, in my brain, I, th I think the little symbol for the paint bucket. I don't think the word paint bucket or what it represents, or I just think paint bucket. And the, the picture in my mind goes, bing, use that. Okay, and then I do it. So, and then we go click, and there. So her arm is blue. Now, if you were coloring for somebody else, if you were doing flats for another colorist, the color itself is not important. And in fact, you're not being paid to color if you're doing flats. So what you would do is you would basically cr get, put down wacky flats, is what I like to refer them to as wacky flats. Oh, and by the way, uh, for the, I'm doing it again, um, <clears throat> for the Magic Lasso tool, uh, I've created an action down here called Expand Two Pixels. So all I have to do is click this little play button, and that will expand to two pixels without me having to go up to here and go Select, Modify, Expand Two Pixels. So I don't have to deal with any of that nonsense. It just does it automatically with one click. That's a good thing to learn how to, how to use those actions. Okay, so click, 
Now you can see here it actually came out from beyond the belt because there's an open line there somewhere and it uh, colored in the skirt. This isn't actually that much of a problem. Um, you can take your magic lasso tool, lasso this and kind of go up and around and because of the way my paint bucket is set up right now uh, I can just click here, pick a crazy color, boom. And it, wherever I click with the paint bucket will only click where the green was. And then it will stop wherever I made the, the end stop. So that's pretty easy. Uh, next thing you're going to check for are white spots in between the lines. I do a lot of kind of feathery stuff. So you take the pencil out and you fill in those little dots. You don't really want those dots. You leave those dots in like that, you will probably not get work as a flatter after that. I'm just checking some of the other feathery spots. I think it's probably right there. This probably needs to be done. That's part of the color. <clears throat> All right. So let's go here and do a little bit more. Sometimes flatting can take a really long time. It depends on the artist and how much detail they're putting into their into their work. Expand two pixels. Um, I usually got my ink layer locked off just in case so I don't mess it up. Let's make that really ugly. Look at that. That's this is really ugly. This is wonderfully beautifully ugly. Get in between these lines. See, there's a little bit of spots up here. Color those in. And uh, do that. And uh, this over here. And you might as well stick with some continuity. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go bloop. Oh, you know what? That's all closed in. So I can use my handy dandy. I almost said notebook. Bling. And because these are already encircled by color, I can just go in and, and drop in, let's see, a nice blue would, look at that, nice, right? Perfect, you're hired. Okay. Go in here and make this yellow selection, bloop. Well, it's not yellow, but I'll probably, I'll make it purple. Why not make it an ugly purple belt? What lady would not want, what Supergirl would not want an ugly purple belt, I, I ask you. Okay. <clears throat> Blip, blip. Okay, make a selection there. Cape there, cape there, cape there. This is going pretty well because of the way that I um, I draw most of my stuff with the very heavy lines, the black lines. And uh, if I know that I'm coloring it myself later on, I'll, I'll go out of my way to kind of make sure some of that stuff's closed off um, so I don't have to worry about making weird selections later on. And then I know, because I know I can go in and I can... Um, if I want there to be more open lines, I can just erase the lines in Photoshop after I make my selections. Let's see, what would be a nice skin tone here? Hmm. Yeah, how about this? Now, this is this is a, this is kind of a personal taste thing. Uh, the hand uh, obviously has a bunch of fingers, right? So there's the main, there's the little finger and the thumb, and then there's this finger, this finger, this finger. You can do just that, right? So we got boom. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Boom. Okay, did it right that time. And then you can do all the other fingers different colors as well in case the colorist is really OCD and uh, wants, wants that option. Um, I can't see that happening, and if it did happen, you know, um, they could probably just go in with the lasso in three seconds and, and fix and do it themselves, you know. So, you can do that if you want, but it's probably a waste of time uh, on your part. Uh oh, I think this lipstick is far too far too close to being actual lipstick here. Um, where's that green, that ugly green color that I picked? Now, because the, there's a lot of open hair here, you can use the lasso tool, or you can use the 
the pencil. I'm using the pencil, obviously, because um, that's how I roll. <clears throat> and you just kind of paint in around the edges, and then you fill it. Now, I just filled in the eyes, but that's okay, because I can just go in and go like that. Uh, beautiful yellow eyes. Yeah, just keep the yellow. This is actually in a closed space. It would take a lot less time if I just did the lasso. Sometimes I, I get into the habit of not doing that. Anyway, yellow and hair. Here we go. That's a lot of open lines because of the hair, so it's definitely you either go in with the, the lasso tool. And because there's already color there, you don't have to worry about being perfect around the inside of the face. Because if you put the paint bucket where it's white, the paint will stop at the edge where I just lost my train of thought. It'll stop. Just trust me. I've already gone over that, I think. <clears throat> Why is this not turning? There we go. Alright. Go in here. Da -da -da. First selection in this little hole here to come around. All right. Now you can skip this entire process if you feel like it. Um, you make it; it's, it, it makes it harder. Like if you're just going to lay color in, make selections and color right away. Go right ahead. It's not a big deal. You know, there's no rule, there's no law that says you have to put flats in. However, flats will come in handy later if you need to make a change. And you will invariably always need to make changes to something. You'll need to fix something. And, uh, like, for instance, you can color something in, and the artist or the editor gets back to you and says, you, this certain such and such character's hair is actually brown, not red you need to fix that so if you keep your flat layers you'll be able to uh, save yourself a lot of uh, a lot of headaches in the future I don't think I really need to do the, the legs right now this is just kind of an example expand two pixels back to the flats layer that darker brown color all right I might as well do the legs. And there's quite a bit of space in between these two um, these two legs. So even if I do expand two pixels, they're not going to touch. So, but I'll put a different color on this leg anyway. There we go. <clears throat> oh, man, I might as well just do the legs here. Dun, 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 I kind of went off the page there. So these are probably the same color as this, so I'll just do that. There we go. Wacky flats, wacky flats. I'll just use the same color there. Now it looks like I drew the feet wrong. Okay, so then after that, this is why I do a separate layer for um, for backgrounds because then I can just go and be blip done with that, and then I, uh, if I need to go in and for instance, um, do more cloudy cloud stuff. That one's open. Then, oh, there's a couple of open lines there, is there? This is tolerance is set way high. Maybe if I could shut it down. No. Uh, looks like I used the JPEG here, so it's not giving me that clear of an edge. Um, I might have to just go in and use the lasso which is not really that much of a problem. You can always fix the edges afterwards. Okay. Am I still recording over here? Yeah, okay, I'm doing well. I was having some issues there. Uh, I don't think 
mm, flatters get credit on comics, just the colorists. Usually, I don't know if that's because they're considered sort of an assistant to the colorist, or the colorist used to say flatters all the time. I, I'm not sure. I've always kind of flattened my own stuff. I guess, um, I guess it should be explained why it's called flatting or flattening. Um, it's because you're just putting down flat color, right? It's just flat color. There's no contouring, there's no rendering, there's no gradations to it. It's just flat, plain color. Nothing special. You're not doing anything else to it. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty. What was I thinking out here? Isn't there? Should probably should be more clothes. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> I'll fix that later. Oh, am I on the wrong layer? Holy crap. I hate it when I do that. Uh, where was I? Oh, I put the pink on the wrong layer. It's another thing about if you're not paying attention. It's, it's um, you can just bring your selection down. You know, you can just select it, clear it out of one layer, put it down into the next layer or another layer, and everything's cool. So it's, it's working with flats is is pretty easy. Um, <laughs> should I keep going? Might as well. Might as well. I'm going to extend that over because that's the way I should have done it in the first place. Now, uh, the colorist can also do holds and stuff and get rid of these black lines entirely, or you can, you can paint in the clouds um, by hand, even. I've done that a couple of times where you just take these lines out entirely and then paint clouds in where these were. So, But that's that's more up to the colorist's job. You don't really need to do that. Um, unless the colorist is like, leaves you a note and says, take those lines out, make them holds. In which case you would just um, show you how to do that. It's fairly simple. Uh, let's see, these clouds for instance. You select your inks click click on the black there you get the line and make a new layer up above the ink line I usually call mine holds and then I give it a crazy wacky color like that and bang um, if you zoom out in Photoshop you'll, just, you'll, you'll see this weird black fringing underneath because it's it's sort of like the black is peeking out from underneath the red or whatever color you put down and you can get that easily enough just by selecting the holds and then unlocking your ink layer and deleting the inks. I don't need to do that right now though. So and do this one and do this one. There we go. Looks like this one is touching her hair, which is okay because I could just use my pencil to make the hold now that it's selected and just not paint in where I don't want to paint it in. Okay. Now ordinarily I would make sure that these lines are um, are nice and sharp but I'm just playing around here so what those cats are doing now. Don't break stuff cats! Time is it? It's not, it's not nighttime feeding time. They're just being silly. Okay, so there, flats are done. Um, my next step, uh, what I usually do is I take my flats, put them inside a folder, and call it flats, and um, duplicate it. Duplicate group, flats copy. Well, flats copy. I always call it color, and I use a U because Canadian, and. Uh, Turn the f uh, put a lock on the flats color, uh, the original flats folder, I should say. Open up the color and foreground color. 
The R key on this tablet, by the way, isn't working quite right. So, and then BG color, right? And then you save it, and you're done. And that's and that's how you do flats, right? And that's and and if that if if you've been hired to do flats, and that was your job for that picture, you're done. So you send the file over to the the colorist and. You do another page, and that's as easy as that. And that would that 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 there was essentially would have been one panel on an entire page. So um, you know, there's other pages where uh, I was doing flats for um, growing up enchanted, and there was like people climbing on a mountainous cliff, and there's rocks everywhere so I'm like I'm thinking to myself is the colorist gonna need all of the separate rocks because you might want to shade them individually so I had to go in and do flats for every single rock and it took it took uh, all quite a while uh, I think sometimes uh, it takes longer to um, to do the flats on some pages than it does to do the coloring to be honest with you but anyway um, that's pretty much it uh, to recap turn off anti-aliasing on all the tools that you're using, um, turn off all the feathering, and um, always make sure if there's feathering or cross hatching that you get your color in between, so that um, the colors doesn't end up with any surprises. And uh, try to make a nice little uh, action for your for commonly used Photoshop uh, tricks. Uh, this one is just expand by two pixels, and it's really really comes in handy. Well that was a short video. Um, hope that one is at least entertaining and edu edutaining? Educational? Edu... Eduformative? No. Anyway, um, I've got... I'm sure I, I've got more ideas for other videos later in the future. I just thought I would rattle this one off real quick for everybody and um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. Nobody watched the last video. That's okay. I'll be alright. I'm gonna press stop.